Hello, Poke People, and here and today, oh boy, I am really, really excited that I can finally show you guys the Sparkle Army deck brought to you by Professor N. Snotty Little K is not here, so we, I am Professor N for this video. <laughs> anyway, yeah, for the longest time, I've really been wanting to make a Sparkle Army deck, but we just did not have the right stuff until Fates Collide. Oh, Fates Collide was so good to us, so. Without delay, we're gonna get into this very good and very defensive Sparkle Army deck. And we're gonna kick things off here with three copies of the new DNC. Now, this is, this is the one you wanna start with the most. So if you want to run a fourth one, that's not exactly a bad thing to do. I may put a fourth one in the future, but right now I'm liking three. And it's got the really cool ability, Sparkle Veil, that as long as the is the active Pokemon, any damage it takes is reduced by 30, which helps mix up for the low 150 HP it has. And its attack is Wonder Stage, Fairy, and Two Colorless 60. And if there's any stadium in play, it does 50 more damage. You don't got this card stadium or anything, so it's just a continuous 110. Doesn't seem like a lot, but remember, this deck is not really for high damage, just so much as high defense, which I've always wanted to make decks with high defense, but it wasn't possible until right now. And next up, with that, I run two copies of Lugia EX and one copy of the new Lugia from Fates Collide. Now, the reason I chose the Lugia line is because of the fact of the synergy they have together. First of all, Aero Ball is very splashable. It's basically the Mewtwo of standard, just 20 for each energy attached to both ones. But the one that really caught my attention was Deep Hurricane, was, is that it's 80 damage and there's a stadium in play, does 70 more damage and you get to discard the stadium. So definitely has the potential to one-shot a lot of big Pokemon. And along with the fact that it works with stadiums just like Deancey does. So, you probably don't want to get rid of your own stadium, but say your opponent plays a stadium that's troublesome to you, just get out the Lugia, 4 energy, Deep Hurricane gets rid of it, and loading up 4 energy onto a Lugia is not as complicated as it sounds. And also, the one Lugia here, mainly because this is not bad to start with either, it's almost like a non-EX Deancey, as where the ability pressure that damage is reduced by 20 instead of 30, but it's a non-EX, so it's pretty good. Also, it's got Intensifying Burn to 60, and 60 more against the Pokemon EX. So, it's basically like the, um, not sure if, you, if a lot of you guys will know about this, but Bufalon back from the Black and White days. Basically, it's the exact same thing, except it's resistant to fighting, which right now is pretty good. So, yep. So that's it for the main attacking EX line. And also, next up here, I run two copies of Zora. And two copies of Zoroark, because what's the Sparkle Army without some Zoroark in there? But in all seriousness, fanboy aside, the reason I'm running, the real reason I'm running Zoroark in here is just because he's so good, and he's probably one of the most, if not the most versatile Pokemon in all of Standard. So basically, it's a stand-in for Keldeo. It's, yeah, it's stand-in version of Keldeo, where if it's on a bench, put it up to the active, and it's got the overwhelming and powerful attack mind jack does 10 and 30 more for each of your opponent's bench so does up to 160 for just a double colorless so it's really really insane not to mention it gets you out of tough spots like say if you're asleep paralyzed something like that so very good secondary or third attacker long is very very useful ability and last but certainly not least two copies of the meta because once again, Sparkle Army needs the meta. Shaman EX, very self-explanatory, just bench him, draw until you have six. And in certain matchups, you can always just Sky Return to get him back in the hand, which can also help you out. Shaman's a lot better as an attacker than most people realize. Well, I wouldn't say he's a good attacker, but attacking with Shaman is not always a bad thing. You just gotta know what situations will be good for it. So that does it for the Pokemon lineup. Next up, I'm gonna go into the supporters. Four copies of Professor Sycamore. Very, very obvious. Discard your hand, get a fresh hand of seven. Amazing supporter. And super, super happy that we have this back. Got three copies of Enin here. Uh, yes, Bert, Shauna, just all those other garbage supporters we could 
finally throw them out, people. And it's back to save us. And also commanding officer of the Sparkle Army. Yes, I just said that. But if you shuffle and draw for each prize you have, so at the beginning of the game, you all draw six. But let's say if your opponent is winning, they only got one prize left. Boom, play it, and now they only have one card. Definitely a good way to mess up their game. And last, I run one copy of Lysander and one copy of Hexmaniac. Hexmaniac can be a little bit careful with because it does also shut down your Deancey and Zoark abilities. But when played right, it just could really mess up your opponent. And Lysander is obvious, just get out one of your opponent's bench Pokemon that you want to knock out. Or just keep there for a few turns to stall them. Alright, that's it for the supporter lineup. Pretty simple. And next up is going to be items. So, standard stuff, four copies of Ultra Ball, give her two cards, search for any Pokemon. Very, very basic stuff, can never win less than four. Also, another standard one, four copies of VS Seeker. Same rules, same rules, can't run less than four. Get a supporter from the discard into your hand. Very, very amazing. Goes aside. And also, very, very good for this deck, four copies of Fairy Drop. Now what this does is any Pokemon that has a Fairy Energy, it heals 50 right off it. This right here is why I don't run Aromatisse in a deck. Because before this, I think I think Deancey was announced before this. And a lot of people were thinking they would have to go like Xerneas and Aromatisse to do all that. But now that we got Fairy Drop, I'm finding that the whole Aromatisse is not needed at all. Now there's Max Potion. Because with Deancey, when played right, you're not going to be ever taking too much damage all at once. So... With what little damage you do have, just use one of these to heal all off right away. And then boom, your Deancey's good and new. And it's not just Deancey, like as it says, anything with a fairy energy. So it could be Lugia or even Zoark if it has the fairy energy. So very, very good card in the deck. Another really, really good card is going to be three copies of Fighting Fury Belts along with two copies of Assault Vest. Now, Fighting Fury Belt is going to be for your Deancey and possibly Lugias to use, just to increase the HPs. And also Assault Vest, mainly for Deancey and the non-EX Pressure Lugia. Now, true story, the other day I was actually playing this deck against one of my friends who was playing Zygarde. And I had my Pressure Lugia up to stall with an Assault Vest. And it was the Pressure, plus Resistance, plus Assault Vest. So, against his Zygarde. He was literally doing 80 less damage. And the same rules apply if you put us on the Anchi and get the Dark Deck. It's going to be 90. So, Salt Vest is very, very good. Make it so that even like the big attackers like Zygarde for Lugia or Yveltal EX for the Anchi, such powerful attackers, yet with this combo played right, they're not going to be hitting you for barely anything. And once again, the Fighting Fairy Belt. Just to do 10 more damage, for mainly for Deancey, just so it's 120 each time, so you get two-shot just about anything. Which, not many things are going to be one-shotting you. In fact, if you play this right, nothing should be able to one-shot you whatsoever. And also, the 40 plus HP is a definitely added bonus to Deancey, making her 190. And also, even with Lugia, making him 210. So, very, very good. Next up here, two copies of Trainer's Mail. Again, pretty obvious, just searching out your trainers with it. Also, three copies of Max Elixir. I was trying out Xerneas, the non EX version, in the deck for a while, but I just find it wasn't really working as far as speed wise. And we run enough basic energy to where most of the time Max Elixir pulls through it for us. Then again, it's only looking at the top six, so nothing is ever guaranteed with this card. But again, with the amount we run, a good amount of the time, you should get a basic energy. Unless they're mostly in your hand. And my last two items I'm going to be running is one Floatstone and one Super Rod. Now, I run the one Floatstone for Zoroark. But, I'm not with my Stadium of Choice. I don't really need two of it. Because attaching basic Fairy Energy to Zoroark isn't really a bad thing. But still, the one Floatstone helps out. It's not even for Zoroark, but just like a shame it gets stuck in the active. I can always just use it to get it out. And also Super Rod, obvious reason, just recycle back basic energy and Pokemon. And now for the Stadium, four copies of Fairy Energy. Mainly the reason why I'm only run, running one Floatstone in this. But with most Zoroark decks, yes, you do want to run two. But with this, it's okay to only run one. I mean, if you personally 
feel more comfortable with two floatstone. I will not blame you whatsoever. That's not bad at all. It, this is just my personal preference and take on the deck. But yeah, four copies of Fairy Guard, mainly because two of our attackers, Deancey and Luga EX, rely on stadiums to boost up their damage. And also, none of them really retreat for free. So having a free retreat cost outside of Zoark is always very, very good. And now for our energy, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, as you can see, we run plenty of fairy energy to where Max Elixir, uh, don't quote me on this, but most of the time will not be a dead card. And also four copies of Double Colorless because literally every single Pokemon in your deck could benefit from this. So yes, that was my take on the Sparkle Army deck, or if some of you may like to call it just a Deancey deck. There are a couple other ways to run this deck. Like I see some people doing it with the Maxis and Rhyperior way and stuff like that, which is not bad, not a bad way to go. This is just my personal way of wanting to take it. But if you want to do the whole Rhyperior thing, then by all means go for it. It can be really, really devastating once you pull it off. But I seem to really like this version. It's done me, has not let me down too much yet. And it's pulled through against some pretty tough matchups. So definitely, in my opinion, Sparkle Army joke aside, definitely I think Deancey EX is very underestimated so far. And hopefully this video can help bring her more to light a bit more. So if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And stick around for tomorrow where the Sparkle Army is going to take on Professor K's Trevenant Mega Alakazam deck. So let's see who prevails up tomorrow. And this has been Professor N with the Pokemon Evolutionaries. And I'll see you all later. Ha! Use Professor.